Can you write down if you can hear me? Can you hear me now? Perfect. Sorry about that. My name is Danny Freire, and I'm the manager of student recruitment here at the University of Saskatchewan. And it's great to be joining you live uh, on this webinar. And thank you so much to our colleagues in the Calto Consortium for hosting us this time around. Let me jump right into the presentation. And first of all, I always have to talk about where is this university located? And we are located in the beautiful province of Saskatchewan, which in the Cree language means swiftly flowing river. It's located halfway between the Vancouver and Toronto. It became a province in 1905 and has a population of 1.1 million. 10% of the province is freshwater, mostly rivers and 100,000 lakes. 5 million acres of parklands and the economy is based on agriculture, mining and energy. In addition to that, of course, like every province, we have a very strong Saskatchewan Immigration Nominee Program. And for that information, I really suggest that you go and visit saskatchewan.ca slash immigration to make sure that you understand all the opportunities for you as an international student to come and do your research and possibly live here in Canada. The University of Saskatchewan is situated in the private city of Saskatoon, on Treaty 6 territory, and the traditional homeland of the Métis, and one of Canada's most beautiful campuses. And this is grounded in the character of a dynamic, forward-looking province. As you can see in the next slide, you'll see that the city of Saskatoon itself has a population of around 300,000 people, and we're continuing to grow at the university is at the heart of it. The New York Times recommended the city of Saskatoon as one of the 52 places to go in 2018 and was nominated as the top 20 destination according to the Architectural Digest. The city of Saskatoon is an active city. Residents and visitors alike flock to the Miwasan Valley Trails, traversing 60 kilometers of pathways in all seasons. The city's youthful vitality and cultural richness are evident in every neighborhood. And there's a lot of things to do here in the city uh, that makes it exciting both summer, winter, spring, and fall. Sorry, I went backwards. I apologize about that. As I mentioned, the city of Saskatoon also experiences four very distinctive seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And one of the questions that I always get asked is like, Danny, well, why would people go to Saskatchewan if it is cold? And of course, I always go back to, well, we have the University of Saskatchewan, which is featuring the signature Greystones uh, Collegiate Gothic Architecture. It's also home to some other facilities like Health Sciences Building and the Gordon Oaks Red Bear Student Center. I will talk more about the facilities later. And there's other things that make the university unique, like museums, galleries, places to hang out with friends, sporting events, venues, of course, gym, climbing walls, uh, multi-sport complex, ice hockey rinks, and, and more. The University of Saskatchewan is situated on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place, and we reaffirm the relationship with one another. And this is one of the core values in, in the university as we make our relationship stronger with the people of the land. Some of the highlights uh, from my perspective that would be interesting for you is the University of Saskatchewan has two Nobel Prize winners. We have Prime Ministers of Canada. We have five Olympic gold medals. We have nine provincial premiers. But in addition to that, we're well ranked when it comes to agriculture and forestry. But that's not the only things that we rank well on. In the world, according to the Shanghai Academic Ranking of World Universities, uh, water resources were number one in Canada, 18 in the world. Veterinary sciences were number three in Canada, 47th in the world. Agricultural sciences were number four in Canada, 51 to 75 in the world. And environmental science and engineering were number four in Canada and 51 to 75 in the world. So that makes this university a very good choice to pursue your studies. In addition to that, of course, we are a member of the U15. The U15 is the top uh, medical doctoral research intensive universities in the country. And that makes uh, the opportunities to do research with us uh, better for you and also at a high caliber. As I mentioned earlier, you know, people ask me, well, why the winter? Of course, we have one of the most beautiful campuses in Canada. And yes, winter is part of our daily lives 
and making sure that you experience and enjoy it is my recommendation to you. Our students come from around 130 countries. We have just over 25,000 students now on the campus. And out of those students, 3,000 are international students. The number of graduate students that we have at the moment are around 4,164 graduate students that are doing research at the master's and PhD level. And international graduate students alone are around 1,471 and they're international specifically. So that means that we have a lot of international students studying with us, uh, doing great research at this university. The university displays remarkable resilience and a commitment to problem solving, attributes drawn from our prairie roots and from the outstanding contributions by members of our community from around the world. Our university's unique spirit has transformed the lives of those who have experienced it. Once you arrive on campus, you will feel the sense of community. Though it gets a bit chilly, main buildings, including the on-campus residence, are connected by tunnels and skywalks. The university is made out of um, colleges and schools. We have uh, 17 colleges and schools, uh, including the College of Arts and Science, uh, Engineering, Kinesiology, Education, Business, Dentistry, Law, Medicine, Nursing, Pharmacy, Nutrition, and Veterinary Medicine, to name a few. Some of our schools are, of course, the school, the Johnson Suryama Graduate School of Public Policy, the School of Public Health, the School of Physical Therapy, the School of Env Environment and Sustainability as well. The College of Graduate, Stu Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies holds more than 80 plus fields of studies. Uh, we have thesis, course, and project-based masters, PhD programs, and postgraduate diplomas. Students that come from all over the world can study at any of those levels, and we have internationally acclaimed faculty. Our signature areas of research are six. Uh, uh, the university focuses or has put a lot of efforts into focusing into agriculture, energy and mineral resources, indigenous people, one health, synchrotron sciences, and water security. Let me explain a little bit more about that. In terms of agriculture, food and bioproducts for a sustainable future is what we focus on, and the projections show that food production must double by 2050 to feed the world's growing population. We're working to strengthen Saskatchewan's agricultural leadership with the new science, technology, and policies to help feed a hungry world adequately, safely, and sustainably. We have several centers, and I will touch base on some of them later, but just to mention a couple, the Global Institute for Food Security, the Canadian Feed Research Center, Crop Development Center, Livestock and Forage Center for Excellence. In terms of energy and mineral resources, uh, we're focusing on technology and public policy for sustainable environment. So the demands for energy and natural resources is starting to outpace supply. Clean energy solutions, sustainable resource development, and some public policy development are vital to meet future demand while conserving ecosystems and sharing the benefits with us all. For this uh, research, we also have the Sylvia Federock Canadian Centre for Nuclear Innovation, and I will talk about that a little bit later. Indigenous peoples, by 2050, half of Saskatchewan's populations may be of Indigenous ancestry, a demographic shift that creates challenge, challenge and opportunity. Our shared journey will help advance Indigenous and non-Indigenous ways of knowing and prepare a new generation of Indigenous youth for the global knowledge economy. We have an Aboriginal Education Research Centre and a Native Law Centre as well. The next three main areas of research are the synchrotron sciences, One Health and Water Security. In terms of the synchrotron sciences, is uh, we do innovation in health environment and advanced technologies. So with Canada's only synchrotron and the largest number of synchrotron users of any university in Canada, we're harnessing powerful imaging and analytical techniques to solve challenges in health, environment, material science, and other areas of global social and economic importance. The Canadian light source is uh, located in the University of Saskatchewan. 
The One Health is a solutions that are looking at animal, human, and the environment interface. This means that the health of all the for all the species is inextricably linked to challenges such as emerging diseases, water and food safety, and environmental degradation. We're working to develop scientific, public health, and policy approaches that integrate human, animal, and ecosystems health. We have several um, research centers that support this work. I will talk about the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization, inter Bio Interback, later. Uh, to explain a little bit more about this. The last signature area of research is water security. So uh, one in six people, or 1.5 billion, live in water stress areas. Climate change, pollution, and overuse are putting severe strain on quality and quantity of fresh water for drinking, sanitation, and food production. We're developing new interdisciplinary science, technology, and policy to address these urgent issues. At the University of Saskatchewan, we are home to the Global Institute for Water Security and also Global Water Futures. Let me dive into each one of the uh, centers that we have here at the university. I just recently mentioned about the Global Institute for Water Security, which studies the impact of climate change and pollution uh, on the world's fresh water. In addition to that, this um, center and the study of uh, water security is the number one ranked program in Canada, number 18 in across the world. And we have five American Geophysical Union fellows that are working in this uh, research lab. In addition to that, the global Water Futures is an, um, has the overarching goal to deliver risk management solutions informed by leading edge water science and supported by innovative decision making tools to manage water futures in Canada and other cold regions where global warming is changing landscapes, ecosystems, and the water environment. There's a lot of support for this type of research, and this is one of our main signature areas, as I mentioned earlier. The Global Institute for Food Security is, is of course, concentrated on uh, combining the genomics and phenomics of data platform. In addition, we want to improve sustainable crop production, enhancing human and animal nutrition, and, of course, addressing growing global demand for safe and reliable food. The Crop Development Center, which is a, a part of this group, uh, has more than 400 commercial crop varieties, and Saskatchewan, just as a fun fact, it exports 41% of the world's lentils, all developed at the University of Saskatchewan that produce up around $37.2 million designing crops for global food security. I want to show you a quick video uh, from a student that came from Brazil to, through the CN, CNPQ scholarship in the country. Please watch a video. Is the video working for you? Can you see the presentation by any chance? Or the video by any chance? Excellent. I hope you like that quick video. 
in addition to that, of course, a, in terms of uh, food security, we have been awarded two Canada Excellence Research Chairs, supporting the world-renowned researchers and their teams. Only the University of Saskatchewan has received two Canada First Research Excellence Funds grants, which total around $115 million in support. The Sylvia Federock Center for Nuclear Innovation is uh, creating ra radioisotopes for plant, animal, and human research. But in addition to that, they advance nuclear medicine instrument and methods. They also try to advance knowledge of materials through nuclear techniques for applications in energy, health, environment, transportation, and communication. And of course, they improve the safety and engineering of nuclear energy systems, including small reactors, and manage the risk and benefits of nuclear technology for society and our environment. The research with further applications to medical diagnosis and treatment, safety engineering, nuclear technology are things that the university is doing. The Canadian light source, Synchrotron. The Canadian light source Synchrotron is uh, comprised of several components that include an electron gun, a linear accelerator, a booster ring, and a storage ring. Each one of these sections contribute to producing a beam of synchrotron line, which is then harnessed in a beam line using an optics hatch, experimental hatch, and workstations. In addition to supporting um, all of these components, it supports synchrotron research in basic and applied sciences. And through the powerful imaging, we try to understand our history and advance our knowledge of environmental health and material sciences. The Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization International Vaccine Center, or also known as VITO Interbac, is a global leader in infectious disease and vaccine research, level three facility with eight commercialized vaccines and six world's first. We, in this facility, they do a lot of work around diseases that uh, occur around the world, including the Zika virus. And the research is organized into several programs, some of them being the bacterial vaccine development, the viral vaccine development, the vaccine formulation and delivery, and the clinical research and animal care. The One Health, or Life Sciences, uh, concentrates on finding the solutions at the animal, human, and envi environment interface. This is involving one of the largest arrays of health disciplines in Canada, and is unique to, the, to Canada as well. One Health is really a collaborative effort of multiple health sciences professions together with the related disciplines and institutions working locally, nationally, and globally to attain optimal health for people, domestic animals, wildlife, plants, and our environment. The ultimate goal of these worldwide partnerships is to advance healthcare for the 21st century and beyond by accelerating biomedical research discoveries enhancing public health efficacy, expeditious expanding the scientific knowledge base and improving medical education and clinical care. Interna internationalization of the university is a key strat strategy uh, to strengthen university and fortify our presence as a globally influential university. And internationalization is also woven in our university institution's mission, vision, and values. Our president mentioned that uh, our objective is to be nationally and internationally recognized as a distinguished university dedicated to research excellence, and also as a welcoming place for students, educators, and researchers from around the world. We're committed to supporting international priorities and international students. And in order to do that, we have international partnerships and activities across the world uh, in, in different regions and different countries that help support this mission of the institution. The international research that we undertake, uh, we hope to solve uh, global, global problems uh, that we cannot tackle or we cannot solve by only thinking uh, and acting locally. We have to go global. And the university is well positioned to contribute to the solutions that address the world's biggest society, societal challenges. 
we encourage all students to consider the university. And some of the things that I always get asked is, well, Danny, if the university has all of the things, how, how do I get there? And if you're from Latin America, all of the Latin American governments have scholarships to help you and support you to achieve those um, master's and PhD futures, depending on what country you're in, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Chile, Peru, Uruguay, Brazil, and many other countries, there's lots of opportunities for you. You have to remember the university has a wide range of academic programs, hands-on research experience, internship co-op programs and field classes, study abroad opportunities, and other scholarships and funding. But we would like you to consider your country's scholarships to come and do more research with us. Let me play another video. I mentioned the top signature areas, but in addition to that, we do many other things. And the following video is from a student from Ecuador that came with the Senecid scholarship from his country. Please listen to what his experience was. My name is Juan, I am from Ecuador. I am doing my master's degree in electrical and computer engineering in the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, I know that here in Canada, in, specifically in the University of Saskatchewan, there are good professors that know a lot. My supervisor is open to new ideas. If uh, I said I want to learn more about pattern recognition, he said it's okay. If you choose, you can investigate, you can research about this topic, and if you like it, you can continue. Yeah, I select Canada because I really believe that it's a good country to be with family. And I, I was right because my wife, she's studying English. My baby is learning many cultures. There are many, many people from all the countries of the world. And there are many activities every weekend. I like Canada. I, I really believe that Canada is the best place to be with family, to research. The university are great, and people are, are friendly. Uh, Canada opened the door to, to the world. Very nice. It's exciting. It's very exciting to be here. Perfect. I hope you like that video. The university, of course, has a lot of support for students uh, and student services. Among them, uh, I'm going to highlight some of them. We have an Aboriginal Student Center that is open to both. Uh, indigenous and non-indigenous students to learn more about the indigenous culture here in, the, in Canada and in specifically in Saskatchewan. Uh, in addition to that, the study abroad is a part of uh, the program and the life of the students here. And these are some of the places where students can go study abroad and do research as well, collaborations across the world. We have more than 150 opportunities in 36 countries. So those are always great opportunities for students. The International Student Study Abroad Center is your home away from home. They are uh, your lifeline to make sure that any needs as an international student are met. And we have a fantastic team that has always told me that they will support you through the good times and the times where you need uh, questions to be answered. In addition to that, the university counts with a full student wellness center, personal counseling, hospital, massage and chiropractor, doctors, and so that you know you will be covered with the free health care from the government of Saskatchewan when you study here at the university. Of course, we know that fun is important, so everybody has to have a break, and we have lots of campus rec intramural sports and uh, student societies where you can belong to. And of course, you belong to a larger community of students uh, that are here to um, study, do research, and share information and culture and knowledge with you as well. Many people ask me, well, where are we going to live? Which is a big question. And I want to show you one more quick video before I jump into some uh, specific information.
Perfect. I hope that you like the graduate house, and that's the one place where graduate students can live and feel comfortable here at the University of Saskatchewan. Before I wrap up my presentation, I want to jump into a couple of things. Uh, usually students ask a lot of questions about, well, how do I find a program? How do I apply? How, what, what are my next steps after all of this? Uh, you really, as a graduate student, we want you to look uh, for the information on our website at grad.usas.ca to make sure that you learn what do you need to do before you apply? You need to know deadlines, you need to understand admission requirements and the application process. And that's very unique to each uh, department and unit that you're thinking about applying to. Once that you click on the Find a Program, we have a full list of all of the programs available here at the University of Saskatchewan within the faculties that I mentioned earlier. And within one of these, each one of these programs, you'll see uh, information specific about if we, did, if we offer a master in science, a PhD, is it project and thesis based or is it course based? In addition to that, you'll find information regarding the research supervisors, because this is a main question of all the students is, well, how do I get in touch with my future research supervisor? So we give you here a full list of all of the research supervisors with their research areas so that it becomes easy for you to find that information. In addition to that, as part of the admissions requirements and the application process, we give you tips on how to contact the supervisor because those are quite crucial when you're doing your application to graduate studies. If you plan to apply for your government scholarship, please do let us know. We want to help you navigate the system and make sure that we match you with the proper supervisor and research area. You can contact us at grad.recruit.usas.ca or you can contact our friends at Caldo. Caldo also provides uh, support in these aspects and they connect with us as well uh, once the students have uh, more information or they have all the materials submitted to them so we can take a look at the applications from the students. I will finish with one more video just to summarize this whole presentation so that it makes sense for you. And then I will open it up for questions from the, from the uh, webinar. One second, please. And here we go. Here's the last video. Are you looking for a place that makes you excited to get up in the morning, ready to tackle your next challenge? A place where you're given the tools and support to follow your idea rabbit down that hall. A place where you're surrounded by the best and brightest minds, so you too can stand on the shoulders of giants. A place where you're encouraged to leave your silo and make a difference in the world around you. The University of Saskatchewan is that place. For over 100 years, the U of S has been breaking new ground in research, and we're just getting started. Want the latest in research facilities? The U of S has three of Canada's best. The Canadian Light Source Synchrotron, the International Vaccine Center, and the Saskatchewan Center for Cyclotron Sciences. Want to unpack the big questions and issues facing humanity? The U of S has two global institutes and six signature research areas focusing efforts from the atomic level to the big picture. Want to help make agriculture sustainable, safer, and more productive? I'm digging deep to get at the roots of food security. I'm helping to feed the world. Want to help safeguard the world's most precious resource? I'm working to predict changes to water in the face of a changing climate. Want to create the renewable energy solutions of tomorrow? Or improve the energy systems of today? I am developing clean energy solutions. I'm finding solutions for responsible resource development. Want to harness the awesome power of Canada's only synchrotron to solve challenges in health, environment, and material science? I am using synchrotron light to help improve the health of millions. Want to help bridge the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous ways of knowing the world? I'm sharing the stories of our Indigenous communities. Want to delve into the mystery of how health and human animals and the environment are all interconnected? I'm making a difference every day. 
Want to be part of building the future? University of Saskatchewan is the right place for you. Come join us. So that summarizes very well the presentation for today. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And again, thank you to our friends in Calda for organizing this. I will open it up for questions to try to answer them as best that we can. So we have a question from uh, Jaime, Bel Jaime Rodriguez. Uh, the presentation um, was about research. And uh, I tried to sort of explain a bit about the uh, programs available at the university. Um, it depends what you're looking for. Uh, you, if you can get us, give us more information, then we'll be able to provide more uh, details for you. Jimmy Velasco, how much is the monthly average cost of living? That is a very good question, uh, Jimmy. Uh, right now, we understand that around uh, to rent an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment is around $800 a month, uh, roughly. And then you have to calculate utilities uh, plus food and groceries. I would say that you need around $1,200 or $1,200 per month in order to uh, live in Saskatoon. And I don't know how that compares to the rest of Canada. You'll have to research a little bit of that. The next question is, uh, if I'm finishing a master's in Sao Paulo, and the field is chemical engineering for focusing on sustainability and life cycle assessment to evaluate environmental impact of products. For PhD, is there any area related to those fields in the U of S? And you know what? You ask a very good question. And let, let us see if we can find that information for you here quickly. Um, just looking for that information here. So my advice, of course, is always to go to grad.usas.ca uh, to be able to find if we have those uh, fields of research. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. And then within that, I will look for sustainability and life cycle. I'm gonna type sustainability because we have a lot of information around that. Uh, and in terms of sustainability, we have several researchers on that area. Uh, sustainability, sustainability. And some of the professors, I have uh, Dr. Andrew Arson, who does sustainable development of natural resources. I also have Dr. AJ Dalai, who does sustainable energy. And I also have Dr. Reed, who does social dimensions of environment and sustainability. And we have also Dr. Andrew Watson, who does um, sustainability, leather sustainability. Canada, Muskoka, agroecosystems, coal, commodities, energy, environmental history, farm systems, and sustainability. So we have about four researchers that you could potentially look at. If you wanna send us an, uh, an email, uh, we'll be happy to help you to find, to see if there's a specific professor that has an opening within those areas. I will type our email again here just to make sure that you have a way to contact us. Carlos, you're more, more than welcome. We're happy that the information was good for you. Paula, uh, chemical engineer career in Colombia. I would like to do a master's in Canada. Do you have any kind of scholarship for international students? I will also like to know if I can study and work at the same time. So Paula, a uh, great question. Let me go back to my presentation. In Colombia, there's a couple of agreements that will support you in pursuing uh, possibly your master's here at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So no, uh, let me further up. Maybe too far up. One second, please, Paula, bear with me. It's right here. Found it. Perfect. So, like I mentioned, in Colombia, there is the co the agreements with Co Ciencias of Co Futuro to be able to support your studies. 
uh, we highly recommend that you look into those two. The, the funding that is available for students is highly competitive, and uh, the professors look at a variety of things, uh, including uh, that you have good GPA and, of course, that you have research topics in the area. But just to kind of give you an idea, in terms of uh, chemical engineering, we have the following we have the following uh, areas of research that we're looking into. So we are looking for, uh, we're looking for applied thermodynamics with emphasis towards applications in the energy related industry. We're also looking for re removing organic compounds and pollutants by control catalytic reaction with UV light and also gas. Uh, we're also looking for removing energy uh, emerging pollutants so such as pesticides, pharmaceuticals from water and water, wastewater through catalytic reaction with ozone. So those are some of the areas. There's many more areas. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, please do write to grad or recruit at USHAS.ca. I should mention that in the chat and beside me is one of my colleagues, Kiela Caudillo, who is uh, originally from Mexico, and speaks perfect Spanish, and is always happy to answer the questions. Uh, from students, and if you mail grad or recruit at USSOCA, you most likely will uh, encounter her. In addition to that, uh, just a quick shout out that uh, our Facebook uh, page for international students is also available uh, on Facebook online. You can join us through Facebook to listen, uh, learn more about the university. We're always trying to post updated content and information so that you uh, have the most up-to-date information from the University of Saskatchewan. You're welcome, Thais Sands. Felipe Matos, uh, regarding scholarships offers, what are the options for international students? Provincial, U of S, Caldo, Canadian government. Okay, good question. So, uh, as we mentioned, some of the scholarships available to Brazilians in Brazil are CAPES and CMBQ. In addition to that, of course, uh, provincially, there's no scholarships available to uh, students. Uh, in terms of the University of Saskatchewan, uh, there is what we call funding and the Dean Scholarships. Uh, they're all based on academic merit and, of course, recommendation by your future professor. Uh, Caldo is not an organization that gives scholarships to students. And the Canadian government, if you are a university student, and if you want to do research for short term at the University of Saskatchewan, you can leverage the ELAP, Emerging Leaders of American Program, ELAP, uh, to be able to come and study uh, or do research for a short period of time with the support of the Canadian government. Paula, you're more than welcome and call the friends Thank you for that reminder. Yes, the presentation will be uh, uploaded later. In addition to that, I forgot to mention that the University of Saskatchewan is considering on going to Mexico in April. Um, all the details are pending and we'll be working with our Caldo partners to be able to uh, continue this conversation if we need to. looking right now for information on that ELAP uh, scholarship that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, of course, you'll have to read the information yourself to make sure that you understand what are all the possibilities. I'm going to paste it here on the uh, chat for your consideration. <laughs> Kayla was trying to help me here and I beat her to the punch, so it's good. <laughs> We're working together. It's all good. Um, I hope that answered the question, Felipe. In case that I forgot to mention some of the, the fantastic things that um, are in Saskatoon, of course, we're about to hit spring and it feels beautiful outside with our weather of minus one or two degrees. So winter is not to be scared of. It's something that we need to go through. Um, Jimmy, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope that you found all the information helpful. Angel or Angel, do you have 
research on nanotechnology. We're going to look for that information. Nanotechnology. Let me let me take a quick look here at the at the university website. So I usually go to grad.usas.ca for that information, and then I go uh, I do a quick search under find our programs, and I say, tell me all the people that are doing nano. Oh, sorry, find a supervisor, and then that will make my life a little bit easier. Nanotechnology. Technology. And unfortunately, we don't do any nano, nanotech. Oh, I didn't spell that correctly. One second, please. And this nanotechnology. Yeah, I have chemical engineering. Oh, we have a few per supervisors. Chemical engineering, environment. So in chemical engineering and environment and sustainability, we do environmental engineering, including biomed biomedic bioremediation and use of nanotechnology and we also do microbial fuel cells uh, we do apply microbiology and food science and our supervisors are dr uh, ildiko badea dr aj delai dr super team gosh and dr asita hadadi they all can be found on the grad.usas.ca website Juan Carlos, I took more time to finish the bachelor's than usual. Do you think that this could impact negative my chances on getting accepted? Uh, Juan Carlos, uh, taking a little bit longer to finish your bachelor's uh, doesn't have an impact um, as long as you had maintained your average and also as long as you have uh, done a little bit of uh, research inclination in your uh, bachelor's, it should be fine. There is no negative repercussions for taking a little bit longer. Uh, if, you if you're still in school and you're still considering Canada and you are considering the University of Saskatchewan, I recommend that you try to come to us through the ELAP scholarship that the gover Government of Canada offers to students. If I apply, thank you so much for that question, Juan Carlos. Mark. Mark Sanchez, if I apply with Conacyt in Mexico and don't get it, will I still be accepted to the program? Very good question. So uh, generally speaking, we, we do work closely with the Conacyt group to make sure that we provide all the information available to students so that they can apply for the scholarship. If you don't get the scholarship, uh, which uh, I don't foresee why you wouldn't. Um, we would work with the student to make sure that, uh, you know, we understand what was the problems. And also, of course, it's a conversation with the professor and the availability of their funds in the research project that they have. Uh, but it, I would say that first try with the Conacyt and then we can work on the rest after you're done. You're welcome, Juan Carlos, and you're work welcome, Mark Sanchez. As I mentioned earlier, and I forgot to mention it again, uh, our Facebook page for uh, international students is a great resource for you to connect with other students and understand what the experience has been here at the University of Saskatchewan. I will add that to the chat so you have a quick look at it. Uh, come and visit us, come and chat with our students, uh, come and chat with us again. We'll be happy to answer any questions. And of course, as I mentioned, you can always email us at grad.recruit.usas.ca uh, to make sure that you connect with Gela or myself or the rest of the team, and we can help you support um, support you through the uh, admissions and applications process to the university. And of course, uh, whatever you need for your scholarship application in your country as well. I'm going to go back to the slide with information here, the contact, the contact information for you to consider. Uh, it's nearing uh, the time that we had allocated for this presentation. If there are maybe one or two more questions, we'll be happy to answer them. If not, please do email us 
or send us a message and then we'll be trying to, uh, to respond as fast as we can and support you through this process. Somebody's typing. Oh, Jaime and Felipe, excellent question. So Jaime, do you accept students that already have a job or can we get a part-time job while taking uh, the PhD? So generally speaking, if you are applying for the PhD, uh, the professors, um, you will be working as part of the research team uh, with the professors doing your research. Uh, if you bring the scholarship from your country, then uh, you should be covered. If you need to do some work, you most likely will be doing teacher assistance jobs or research assistant jobs that will help you support. Uh, uh, while you stay here, there's usually a conversation with the professor. Uh, you, Felipe, you mentioned you mentioned the presentation, the international activities. What kind of international partnerships you have in Brazil? In which universities, in which kind of activities? Felipe, very good question. So let me pull out that information um, here. Um, we're going to look uh, for the international uh, partnerships on our website. Kiel is helping me here find the information. And then we're going to click on International Research and Partnerships. Then we're going to go into the Partnerships map. And then we're going to take a look at the country called Brazil. So, and then we're going to do a quick search. And then some of the partnerships that we have are, of course, with CAPES. Um, in terms of universities, we have uh, Pukiminas. So that's the Typical Catholic University of Minas Gerais. We have a, a partnership with uh, University of Brasilia. We have a, a partnership with the Federal University of Minas Gerais. We have a partnership with the Instituto Federal Catarinense. Catarinense. Uh, we have a partnership with the Sao Paulo State University. We have a partnership with Universidade Estatal. Estatual do Centro Oeste, Unicentro, a uh, partnership with the Federal University of Santa Catarina, a uh, partnership with the National Council for Scientific and Technological Development of the Federative Republic of Brazil, also with the Universidade de Sao Paulo, Universidade de Federal do Rio de Janeiro, uh, as some of the partnerships and collaborations that we have around the world. And inside each one of them, there will be several things. So if you are in one of these universities, you can easily access the uh, ELAP uh, funding from the government of Canada. You're more than welcome, Felipe, more, more than happy to provide that information. Uh, I see that the time has come, and our friends in Caldo had mentioned that uh, we can probably um, close the chat. I want to thank you again one more time for visiting us. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact other friends in Caldo, or you can email us at grad.recruit.usas.ca. And don't forget that there's other webinars upcoming, and please have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.